What you're hearing here is the sound of a troll farm. That's the name given to groups of people that operate social media accounts to generate online traffic to push certain causes. In this case, you're hearing what went on behind the scenes of the Institutional Revolutionary Party, or as they popularly known, PRI. It's a video shot in the run-up to the 2012 presidential election. A man over a speakerphone tells his team to tweet quickly, it's the moment of Mexico. They're trying to turn around the conversation happening around two negative tweets. The tweets went viral and they were against Pri's candidate. The candidate was Enrique Peña Nieto and he's now the president. Besides, it's the moment of Mexico, the troll farm master tells them to retweet tweets by Peña Nieto. The idea is to turn negative tweets into positive tweets. And of course, since then, the use of bots and troll farms has been, at least as I understand it, a huge talking point in Mexico. What are people saying? Well, at least since early 2010, there have been reports about bots in political campaigns. I spoke to political strategist J.J. Rendon. He's a Venezuelan, but he worked for PRI in several campaigns from 2000 to 2012. Although it's known that PRI used bots in previous elections. Samantha Bradshaw is a researcher on Oxford University's computational propaganda project. And so these are campaigns that are designed to look like they're bottom-up, coming from the community, coming from civil society, but they're actually not. I believe that, you know, the Mexican government during the 2012 elections used a lot of their Twitter bots um, to amplify stories um, and to get things hashtags trending. And here's an interesting detail. Tracking the use of bots and fake news in Mexico is actually quite dangerous. A day after Alberto and I spoke, he was forced to flee the country because of threats he received regarding his work. Obviously, we cannot share his whereabouts, but let's just say he's gone underground for a while. So we know that political parties and other groups are using these tactics, but what effect is it having on Mexican politics? So, one of the ways that the use of bots has had an impact in Mexican politics, well, not just Mexican politics, but globally, is that it has increased polarization in societies. I can hear Samantha Broadshaw from Oxford's Computational Propaganda Project. We're seeing people move further and further away from each other in terms of being able to discuss politics. And, you know, politics is built and democracy is built on being able to negotiate. And, you know, we're not always going to agree on everything, but we need to be able to come to a safe space to discuss politics and to, you know, air our grievances. Um, but social media is increasingly becoming a place where we aren't able to do that. We're also seeing waves of populist movements all around the world uh, with, you know, groups really at the fringe of society leveraging this technology to spread their ideologies um, and generate false consensus around them. And to me, that's also one of the really dangerous political implications of this because it's giving a lot of these really extreme voices um, you know a channel to express those thoughts in ways that aren't healthy for democracy people should be aware that you know what they read online and you know the news and information that they receive online uh, it's not often just by accident, you know, it's the product of these algorithms that are making decisions about our news, it's the product of malicious actors that might be trying to um, have some kind of effect on democracy. And so just being a little bit more critical about the kinds of information that uh, we're consuming about politics is really, really important. Um, and media literacy is, is very important uh, going forward in the digital age.